I bought this Volkswagen Polo for just the sum of £1,200. I bought it because I'm going to try and trade £500 into my ultimate dream Volkswagen Transporter by buying fixing and selling bangers like these and in today's video i'm going to tackle something that i've never done before and that's change the cam belt on this thing but before we can do that the car is going for an mot so wish us luck i started this journey with a dream 500 pound in my pocket and the aim of owning a volkswagen transporter van we flipped a volkswagen lupo and made 693 pound and 28p we also flipped some airlift suspension making 150 pounds we flipped a trailer making a pretty poor 10 pound 31 we sold the vw fox for 661 pound 25 before we ended up with the polo that we have now the polo has failed its mot test and there's some things we need to do before this thing can be roadworthy Looking at the sheet then, we've got repair immediately, major defects. Service brake excessively binding on the near side. Service brake excessively binding on the offside rear. Parking brake efficiency below requirement. Drive shaft joint, constant velocity boot severely deteriorated, minor defect. A monitor and repair if necessary. Indicator bulbs slightly discolored, rear exhaust corroded and slight play in the inner steering joint. I just wanted to reiterate, the MOT doesn't run out on this thing till September. However, I thought if I put it through an MOT now, that will help encourage a new buyer when we come to sell this thing. Now, the braking issue is the only thing legally we have to do to get this thing MOT'd and back on the road. Although it's only advisory and it is very minuscule, I will sort out the indicator bulbs on this thing as well because less things on that MOT sheet are going to encourage a prospective buyer even more. So we'll get them things boxed off too. With the passenger side bulb change, we can turn our attention to the driver's side. Now these things are so easy to swap over, anyone can do it. Now, the headlight comes off with a little screw in the back, and then you can remove a plug, get access to the motherboard and change the bulb so easily, as you can see I'm doing here. Once that's done, it can all clip back together, plug back into the loom and be fastened back into the car. And then, it's just time to test it all works. Switching our attention onto the elephant in the room, the brakes that failed the MOT test. We're going to get the wheels off, inspect the brakes and have a little look at what's going on. Disclaimer, I know my trolley jack is absolutely useless and the car was well supported when working on it. So wind up these rear brakes then. So I've left two wheel nuts in the hub. I'm going to turn it using the bar to see how well this thing moves. Now, it doesn't move as nice as I think it should. So we're going to whip the hub off and have a look at the shoes and see what's going on behind this thing. The drum off and as you can see the brakes are really dirty so to start with we're gonna get all the brake dust clean off this thing with a bit of brake cleaner so we've got the drum off and as you can see the brakes are really dirty so to start with we're gonna get all the brake dust clean off this thing with a bit of brake cleaner <laughs> Thank you. 
It's probably been about an hour since we last joined together and I got the rear drum off this side and got it all cleaned up. So this side got all cleaned up and the other side, well. On this side, as you can see, we've got new shoes in the rear drums. Now, that's gonna be so much better and hopefully it will pass this MOT now. But we aren't out of the woods yet. I need to get the other one replicated and then a friend of mine's gonna join me and we're going to get this cam belt done once and for all. So what does the timing belt or cam belt do? Well, it keeps everything moving inside the engine in a synchronized manner, like the crank and the cam you can see here. Everything moves in a synchronized manner, allowing it to work. Now, if the belt snaps or the timing isn't aligned, all the moving components inside the engine won't be synchronized anymore and it will cause damage like you can see to this valve. The piston is hitting the valves because it's out of sync. So far, we've got the coolant line pulled underneath, allowing the coolant to come out. We started taking the auxiliary belt off, the pulley off. We started to release some of the engine mount bolts and just some of the ancillaries around to make this thing a lot easier. This is Mark. He's a good friend of mine helping me do this as I don't have the confidence to do this on my own as messing up the timing could be catastrophic. As we mentioned, time is important, and this is our mark to show that this bottom pulley is absolutely in line. On the little polo is now done. Everything's working absolutely fine and we're one step closer with getting this thing done. Now the person you saw there was Mark, a good friend and a colleague of mine, an absolute guru and he helps and pretty much done all the work on this. Now I'm up for picking up the spanners and giving anything a go, but when it comes to timing and engines, that's not something that I want to dab my hand at just yet. I just need to get the wheel arch line in, the under tray back under the car, get a wheel back on, and then this is a job ticked off the list. We just need to carry on with that rear brake, but I'm probably gonna do that another day and just finish that off off the camera. Unfortunately, that is all we have got time for this week. With the cam belt now being done, we're getting very close to getting this thing ready to be sold. Right along next week, and where we're gonna get this thing big detailed, all finished up, listed for sale on Facebook, and fingers crossed, we are gonna get this thing sold. Big shout out to Mark for helping us with the cam belt, but most of all, I hope you've enjoyed the video, and if you have, smash that like button, smash that subscribe button, most importantly, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.